Hey everyone, this is Phil, and uh, today we'll talk about some recent things I've picked up in the world of photography. I have uh, been picking up some kind of weird gear for me, uh, but uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, there's a few items that I'm quite excited about. So the first thing is something that I've always wanted, and that is a color checker uh, passport. This is just has all the uh, color swatches uh, that you use to get your white balance uh, correct. It has a separate page for just uh, white balance. And uh, I've always kind of wanted that because I don't really grade my footage, uh, but sometimes my uh, color balance is way off and I would have uh, preferred to have that kind of point of reference. And um, my newest videos are going to have that uh, balance color hopefully I'm not great with color grading or editing any of my footage or my photos um, but that should help with it and uh, I got this for pretty cheap uh, used and of course there's not really anything that can get go used with those um, if you just want to get your your color balance you can just use a white sheet of paper or um, a gray card um, that are like two three bucks on uh, Amazon but these kind of look cooler um, with all the colors color swatches in the inside um, just looks really cool does it uh, I'm just a, a fan of how this stuff looks yeah, anyways next thing uh, is a Lumix GX1 this is a camera that I got uh, because of a fellow uh, photography youtuber uh, you might know him, um, James Popsis, uh, is one of the most amusing creators, I think, in the photography YouTube uh, world. He does landscape photography and he's uh, been using this as kind of his more uh, everyday walk around camera. Uh, this is a camera that was released uh, originally in, I believe, I should have looked that up in, I believe, uh, 2010 ish. Uh, and that is when I was still in the Micro Four Thirds system uh, because I had my uh, EP3 camera probably at that point uh, from Olympus, but I was kind of too invent invested in the Olympus uh, ecosystem and I didn't really give this any thought, but uh, a friend of mine had this camera and was very, very satisfied with it. And I can see why it has a lot of really exciting uh, features that feel ahead of the time uh, and has some features that I wish that my uh, ZV-1 had <laughs> because this is honestly a better camera than that. It doesn't have any uh, great image stabilization or anything, uh, but apart from that, honestly, I kind of like this better. Uh, it is, I think, almost the same kind of size. It has a Micro Four Thirds lens mount, uh, so you can get ex uh, you can exchange the lenses on it, and also use cam lenses like this Lumix uh, twenty millimeter uh, one point seven, uh, which I never sold because this is one of my favorite lenses on the Micro Four Thirds uh, system, and I remember really really liking this, and I think I uh, took some of my favorite shots on uh, my. EP1 and EP3 cameras with this lens uh, and I never let it go. And uh, one of the reasons why I got this camera is actually this lens. Yes, this is a lens. So this is a C-mount lens. Um, it is a Cook lens, um, which I got uh, on a whim um, because I saw a uh, video from uh, Ted Forbes, who, as you probably know, I really respect. Uh, Ted is the reason why I'm shooting, shooting uh, film right now, because he did a video on the uh, Bessa RF uh, that I really, really liked, and I just thought I need to own this camera. And this is a Taylor Hobson Cook um, CineLens, one inch uh, f 
and this adapts of course on the sony camera as well and uh i you are perfectly able to use it because it's uh, the sony cameras have the APS-C or Super 35 uh, mode and can also uh, digitally uh, crop into the, the image without losing uh, much resolution. But if you want to use it and just use it uh, as you would expect to without any cropping or anything, uh, then you need a smaller sensor because the image format that this was designed to uh, function on is a uh, smaller format than uh, what we call full frame uh, 35 millimeter uh, now so this mounts on a uh, C mount adapter obviously uh, and it has uh, an in inbuilt uh, aperture blades uh, which is good uh, because I don't want to get a uh, external diaphragm uh, to use with this and it does have a helicoid inside as well which uh, a lot of cine lenses don't have that uh, so you actually need to move them physically away from the camera or towards the camera to use them um, but this has all of that uh, built in in this tiny tiny package and uh, i've been really enjoying using this um, it's a really it's really beat up you can see uh, the aperture ring is just super deformed i don't know what the previous owner did with this uh, but the footage that I got out of uh, this Taylor Hobson cook lens on the GX1 actually surprised me it was so pleasant I'll show you some uh, examples of that footage but I was really really happy with uh, the video that comes out of this little camera with this tiny tiny lens which is also this is like it also almost feels like a, a body cap lens. Uh, it's definitely pancake sized. And uh, it just produces a really uh, pleasant, uh, smooth uh, bokeh, uh, I guess, uh, to use a overused word. Um, but uh, the out of focus areas are just very, very smooth. It's very pleasing. Uh, and I've really been enjoying uh, the shots that I've gotten out of this camera and this lens. Um, so that's been kind of my sort of a guilty pleasure combo that I've had. Uh, it's a really, really pretty little camera. It's a little, little, uh, tiny, pleasant, uh, pretty, pretty lens uh, on this. The only thing that really uh, gave me a, little, a few pr troubles uh, with this camera and this lens is that, of course, there's no filters. <laughs> I don't have any uh, variable in the filter for this, this lens. So a lot of the footage that I shot outdoors has been hopelessly overexposed. Uh, but of course, that's the look in itself. So we'll just pretend it's on purpose. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've been really happy and I think I'm going to keep this around and uh, use it in some of my uh, B-roll uh, for some videos. So tell me if you spotted it any anywhere. And uh, yeah, that's uh, something that I've picked up recently and that I've really been enjoying using. And the last thing that I've recently picked up is this original Folklander brass lens. Uh, I have been looking around, uh, but it's very hard to locate because this doesn't actually say which model of lens it is. Uh, it just says up here, one. <laughs> so it just has a one on there. And based on that and the general uh, shape, I would assume uh, that this is probably a Folklander uh, Euriscope, uh, Euroscope, I guess, uh, lens. Um, because that has a uh, series double, double zero through, I think it is eight. Uh, but I haven't actually been able to find this exact lens uh, online yet. Uh, so if you are very uh, well versed in this uh, kind of lens and uh, you've, you know what this is, uh, then let me know. I am definitely very interested in knowing. I got this mostly uh, because I saw it, saw it uh, for sale very cheaply 
Uh, and uh, as you probably know, I am a Folklander uh, fan. Uh, and this also, this still, still says the original location on it, but Folklander was actually founded in Vienna, which is of course my hometown. Uh, and then they moved to Braunschweig in uh, Germany afterwards. Uh, I got this in, I think, reasonable uh, condition. There's little uh, dust inclusions and there's some weird stuff on like the, the back lens that I'm not quite sure if it's uh, fungus or what that is. Uh, it might just be discoloration from, from uh, the glue or the uh, dye used on the inside of the barrel uh, and also I did not get uh, the waterhouse stops that are intended to be used with this uh, you can see there's a slit here uh, where you can actually salt in uh, apertures um, or diaphragms for closing down the aperture on this lens this this is what you would use uh, to close down uh, the aperture on a large format lens like this uh, and I'm going to have to make some of those myself or uh, possibly if I can find some original ones I'm, I'm probably going to use those. Uh, either way, uh, so I don't own a large format cam camera or a proper bellows uh, system that would allow me to use this uh, so I mainly bought it because I have always wanted to own one of these uh, because they look absolutely gorgeous but of course I do want to see how it renders and I want to use it um, although it probably would have to be on my digital camera uh, and what I have been uh, able to figure out that is that this actually has a 52 millimeter thread on the uh, base plate so it actually comes with a ring um, that you can mount onto a, uh, I would assume a, a wooden plate uh, and uh, you would use this on your camera then uh, and that is actually a 52 millimeter thread uh, just threads in like this and it does fit on a step up ring which enables me to use this on a 42 M42 uh, threaded mount adapter so I have my mount adapters, I can screw this on here and then these have bellows built in which I can use uh, to get it to the right focal length. So I had already uh, previously bought these two mount adapters so, so this is as far as I uh, have gotten but this is still not close enough. Uh, so. I have actually ordered some more extension tubes uh, to use with this uh, so I can extend this further and hopefully get some things in focus. So uh, I will show you afterwards uh, how it works uh, with the focus tubes and hopefully with some stuff in focus and I will uh, use this for a few shots but of course because this is a kind of precarious construction with the step up ring that is obviously not to not intended to hold the lens uh, I won't be using this in any action shots or anything uh, I'm just going to use this for some uh, laid back uh, maybe still life or nature photography and not lug it around too much uh, because I don't want to damage this this is obviously uh, an artifact from two centuries ago and uh, it would be a shame to, to hurt it like that uh, and also I'm also probably going to release this into the wild uh, again at some point uh, because although I think there's a fair number of these lenses out there uh, of course it would be better in the hands of someone who's actually shooting large format and uh, maybe wet plate or whatever this was originally designed for. And that's all I have to show you right now. Um, these have been my recent purchases in photography. It's not all film photography based. I'm uh, using a bunch of that on digital, of, of course. Uh, but for photography in itself, I'm still very much uh, kind of committed to film. Um, 
Let's see how uh, it works out uh, with rising prices and manufacturers going out of business. I am quite convinced that Fuji is out uh, because they have uh, said that they're temporarily uh, halting sales of film in Japan uh, because of supply constraints or whatever, uh, but they're out. I don't think they're ever coming back uh, into the film production world. Uh, maybe they'll make some uh, third party produced uh, products again, uh, have whoever it is, uh, Ilford or Adox or whoever is making uh, their uh, Across film, uh, make some more stuff. Uh, but I think first party produced Fuji film is dead, which is a crying shame. Uh, because I really like my Superior Premium, um, I liked uh, 400H, and I like uh, the Reversal um, slide film uh, that they produced quite quite a lot too. And I consider myself uh, fortunate to have tried it. And then of course, uh, everyone's talking about uh, rising film prices. Kodak is raising their prices again and again and again and again. Uh, which is of course terrible um, but I'm not shooting that much anyways uh, lately with the kids and everything going on in my life I don't have that kind of time so it's still doable for me uh, although I don't like the expense uh, but I think that's not gonna be the thing that forces me to quit uh, but it is kind of a shame because I would appreciate if film manufacturers were able to create the conditions where everyone can shoot as much film as they like. But uh, I mean, they do have to run a business. Uh, Kodak makes a lot of chemical and uh, coating stuff and printing stuff. Uh, and then Fuji, of course, makes so much money from, from pharmaceutical and uh, chemical production that film is barely a, a drop in the bucket. So. People have been saying, uh, why is Fuji ignoring the resurgence in film? Uh, this has got to be making the money. It is not. They are making so much money off of pharmaceuticals and uh, stuff like that, that film, they're probably not be, being able to make uh, ends meet at all. Uh, and that's just uh, a footnote on their investor reports or whatever you call that stuff now. <laughs> uh, I do think that Instex is going to st uh, stick around, um, which is good. Uh, I do like Instex. Uh, I would appreciate if Fuji made some nicer cameras, maybe with interchangeable lenses. Um, if they could just make a Instex camera with a Leica M mount uh, or a M42 mount or something like that, I think it would sell really well. I don't know why they don't, because there's got to be a market for that, right? Uh, anyways, that's me, Randy. Um, thank you for sticking around for me, with me today. Uh, I really enjoy uh, showing off my stuff. I really enjoy watching other people's purchases. Uh, so uh, make sure to make your own videos as well. Um, hit me up in the comments. Uh, tell me what you have bought lately, uh, what you have been enjoying using and what you're looking into uh, getting uh, next. So thank you for watching today. Uh, always love seeing you and I hope to see you again. Forgot one more thing. Uh, the lens that I'm recording this right now um, is a Viltrox uh, 24 millimeter 1.8, uh, which is very cool uh, because it's a 1.8, uh, whereas my regular uh, 24 millimeter setup is a 2.8. Uh, it's reasonably compact, uh, so it's probably not going to replace my 2.8 for walking around, but for talking headshots with a constrained uh, room like I usually have, uh, so I don't have a lot of space in the locations that I film in uh, normally. This is really great uh, because it's small, it's uh, small enough to carry around. It doesn't cost as much as the uh, Sony G Master. Uh, not getting that uh, but it's actually smaller than that I think uh, and it's good enough and doesn't have a lot of focus breathing 
So it's actually a pretty cool lens. Uh, focus is just fine. Um, I do enjoy uh, the fall off on the out of focus areas uh, reasonably well. It is closer. Um, it doesn't have the greatest uh, minimum uh, focus distance, so this actually doesn't focus uh, closer than 30 centimeters. So I think that's this is about as close as it, as it gets, uh, and I'm about maybe 50 centimeters, uh, maybe away right now, which is not great. Um, but apart from that, I think it's really nice lens. Uh, it's very good for for a uh, talking head like this because I don't like uh, a wider uh, lens than 24 millimeters. Uh, I've tried uh, with 20 millimeter lenses, but I don't like how my face looks on those. Uh, so as you know, uh, with every different uh, focal length, uh, you get a different distortion and it gets, gets slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. I'm not that slim. so. Uh, this is actually reasonably close to real life. Uh, I would say um, it's acceptable. Uh, with a 20 millimeter, uh, it just didn't look like me anymore. So <laughs> I didn't really like that much. That that much. Uh, but yeah, uh, this lens very nice.